In today's world, you can build a home, you can build furniture, and you can even build a bear. But did you know that you could build a router? And I don't mean just the hardware, but also the software. In this case, I'm talking about building OpenWRT to customize your router from the ground up. In this video, you'll learn how to do just that with an OpenWRT image for Raspberry Pi. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, we're building a custom image of OpenWRT for Raspberry Pi. You might be wondering, why would you build a custom image of OpenWRT? Great question. With a custom-built image of OpenWRT, you can pre-configure your router so that it's ready to go out of the box. All you have to do is power it on. If there are any configuration changes that you have to do afterwards, a custom image reduces post-deployment configuration time. Custom images also make upgrading a breeze. Upgrading with a custom image lets you add packages and new configurations to your existing instance during the upgrade process without using OPKG. To build OpenWRT, you will need the following. A Linux new based operating system with at least two gigabytes of RAM and at least 25 to 30 gigabytes of disk space. While I didn't find the requirement for CPU cores, I'd recommend at least a four core processor. For this demonstration, I'll be using a Debian 11.2 VM with eight gigabytes of RAM, 50 gigabytes of disk space, and four CPU cores. Let's build a custom OpenWRT image together. To begin, we'll first log in to our local Debian virtual machine using SSH. This is the easiest way to proceed as the complete build process will be done all via the terminal with no need for a GUI. Since this is a local VM, I should not have any connection issues either. Just to show you, Here's my Debian virtual machine in VMware Fusion. Then we'll make sure it's up to date by using the command sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Now that our VM is up to date, we're ready to install the necessary build packages. I won't list them out. However, you can find them in the link in the description below, along with the rest of the build instructions. With those packages installed, it's time to clone the OpenWT repository onto our file system. We can do this with the git clone command. Now that we've cloned the repository, we're ready to continue our preparations. Let's change our directory to the OpenWT repository we just cloned. First, we decide on what version of OpenWRT we want to build. You can use a tagged branch of a major release, like 21.02, or if you want the most cutting edge features, you can build from the master branch that has all of the latest developer changes. In this case, I'll be building off the 21.02 branch. To do so, we'll need to change our branch from master, the default, to 21.02. We'll do this by first running the git branch and git tag commands to see the available branches. Once we see the tag branch we want, version 21.02.2, we'll change to that branch by using the git checkout command. Now that we're in our desired branch, there's a few more steps we need to take before we get into our customizations. We need to run a couple of scripts in the OpenWT repository that will update and install the packages. We can do this easily by running the update and install scripts respectively.
Once complete, we're ready to customize our image. To do so, first run the make menu config command. This command loads up a terminal GUI program that makes it very easy to add, remove, or change configurations for your image. Loading this up for the first time may take a while. After then, it loads up almost immediately. Now that it's loaded, we could start selecting our packages and making changes. First, we choose this target system. We do this by navigating with the arrow keys, pressing Enter to enter into submenus, and pressing Space to select. For this demonstration, I'll be choosing the Broadcom BCM27XX, the chipset for Raspberry Pi 4B. Once highlighted, press Enter. Next, we choose our subtarget, which for us is BCM2711 boards 64 bit. Again, hit Enter to select it. Lastly, our target profile will automatically be Raspberry Pi 4B. 400, 4CM, exactly what we want. Next, we'll configure our target images. Once in here, we choose our file system and the size of our build target so that it inflates to the correct size when starting up OpenWRT on the device after flashing. I'm using Squash FS because of its benefits of being a read-only file system, helping to preserve the integrity of the storage media, but also allows you to reset the device if you need to back to the original custom firmware you're creating here. However, if we want to build an EXT4 image, we can also select that option and both will be built. In this case, I'm only choosing SquashFS and we do so by pressing the spacebar. For the image options, we have the kernel partition size and root file system partition size. I don't modify the kernel partition size, but for the root file system size, I modify that to the size of the storage on my target device, whether it be a memory card or flash drive. I couldn't do the exact size of the card, as you have to take into account the kernel partition, but I do roughly the correct size, minus a couple gigabytes, to be sure the flashing process works correctly and does not complain of the file size being too large for the storage media. Hover over the root file system partition size option and press Enter. For 32 gigabyte storage media, I do 30,000 megabytes for the root partition size. Hit Enter to finish, and then select Exit at the bottom, and press Enter once more to return to the main menu. After this, we move on to selecting the packages we want in our build. As an example, I'll add the package for the USB Ethernet adapter I used when building the Raspberry Pi router, along with a package that enables hardware interface devices, like a mouse and a keyboard, for use with our Pi. To easily find these packages, I can simply search using a Vim style syntax by clicking the forward slash key and then typing out the name of the package. First, I'll look for KMOD USB Net A6AX88179 by typing it out. Here, it will tell me where the package is by looking at the location in our last result. So now, I'll simply navigate to kernel modules, then USB support, and select the package. To select the package, we highlight over it, press space twice to select it with an asterisk. If you see M next to the package, that simply creates the package and does not install it so make sure it's an asterisk next to the package you desire. We'll repeat this process for the second package, KMOD USB HID. After searching for it, we find it under the same location, kernel modules, USB support. As you can see, it's already selected by default. While we are here, we can add a couple more packages, such as USB 2 and USB 3 support in the same location at the bottom of the page. Last but not least, we cannot forget about installing Lucy. We can do this by going back to the main menu, then navigating to Lucy and Collections. Here, we want to select the packages Lucy and Lucy SSL for HTTPS support. 
This process can be repeated for any packages you know will be necessary in your deployment. If you're curious about the more advanced things you can do, then watch these next sections. Otherwise, you can skip to the build phase. To exit menu config, we press the right arrow key to highlight exit and hit enter. Repeat this process until you're prompted to save the configuration and then press enter to save. After we are done choosing our packages, there is plenty more custom configuration we can do. If we want to change the SSH banner when logging in, we can simply do so by modifying the banner file under OpenWRT, Package, Base Files, ETC Directory. Here, I will change the word wireless to cellular. If you want to enable UART by default, we can do so by modifying the config.txt file under OpenWRT, Target, Linux, BCM27XX, Image Directory. In the config.txt file, add the entry enable underscore UART equals one and place it under the place your custom settings here comment. You can also customize your network configuration by editing the network, DHCP, and wireless config files under Files, ETC, Config Directory. To do this, you'd first create the Files directory. This represents the root directory of the target installation. Then simply create the ETC and Config Directories, and lastly, the network, DHCP, and wireless files. The easiest way to do this is by creating your desired network setup on another OpenWRT instance, copying over those files, and adding them to your build here. Unless you need a specific network configuration upon deployment, I would hold off on network file configuration until after the deployment and let the normal configuration auto-generate. For the sake of example, I will paste in here a custom configuration for each file. The custom network file will set the default network to 192.168.2.1, the custom DHCP file will start the network range at 10, and the wireless config file will be from my Raspberry Pi router video where the default SSID is Raspberry Pi. If you wanted a custom default root password, you can do so the same way, by creating your own passwd and shadow files under a similar directory structure as above. Files, then etc. It's also best to create these sample files in another OpenWT instance by adding them to your build here. Again, if you do not need custom authentication on deployment, then I'd recommend letting the default scripts auto-generate the configuration. For the sake of example, I'll paste in a custom passwd and shadow files where the root password is testpass123. While you can do the customizations above, it can possibly cause conflicts with auto-generated settings during initial boot of your deployment. That's why the OpenWT team recommends using UCI defaults to incrementally integrate only the required customization. This helps minimize conflicts with auto-generated settings, which can change between versions. You can do this by creating a 99 custom file under Files, ETC, UCI Default Directory. This doesn't come without its own risks as well, as you can overwrite existing values. However, you can implement checks to be sure you don't. Since I already have done my customizations above, I will not be covering this process. For an example, refer to the OpenWT docs linked in the description below. Before initiating the build, there is one more place we can configure changes. That is in the kernel, by using the make kernel menu config command. Generally, most of your configuration will be done in menu config. However, if you need to make kernel customizations, you could do so here. 
Since this process is effectively the same as make menu config, and I don't have any kernel changes, I won't be covering this. Now, with all the configuration changes complete, we're ready to proceed with the build. To start the build process, we simply run the command make hyphen j, then the number of CPU cores you have plus one. Since I have four CPU cores, I'll use five. This allows for faster build times. After we run this command, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. So take a step away from your computer, grab a snack or a drink, and enjoy the show. Assuming we see no errors in the build output, we have successfully built a custom image of OpenWRT. To find your final images, we navigate to OpenWRT, bin, targets, bcm27xx, bcm2711 directory. Here, we see our compressed factory flash images, including our compressed sys upgrade files as well. From here, grab your image file to flash or the sys upgrade file to upgrade and get to work. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Would you resort to building your own OpenWRT images or continue to download them from a base install of OpenWRT? Drop me a comment below so we could discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.